Okay guys, so as promised, here's a review of everything that we did in unit nine. So to start out with, we did the law of sines and law of cosines. So with law of sines, it's the one that had fractions in it. So the sine of each angle, so sine of capital A, divided by its opposite side is proportional with each angle and side that's in the triangle. So capital letters are our angles, lowercase is opposite side. All of these ratios are proportional. You're never going to need to use all three, just two at a time. So let's look at our first example here. It says find BC. So B to C is this side here, but it's across from the capital A. So I'm going to go ahead and label that as little a. So since I need to solve for that, I for sure need to include that as a fraction. So you always do sine of the opposite angle, so sine 39, over that side, so little a. Now we need one where we know both, where we know the side and we know the angle across. So the only other side we have is 27. So I have no choice but to use b, only we don't know what that angle is yet. It's easy to find. All triangles are always 180. So let's subtract the two that we already know. And that actually gives us 90. So angle B is 90 degrees. But now I can set up that ratio as sine 90 over 27. You're going to be using Inspire calculators. So as long as you can set it up, you can use and solve. Type it in just like this, comma A, and then close it. But I don't have an Inspire here, so I'm going to have to work this out the longer way. Which means that I'm going to cross multiply. So if I cross multiply in this direction first, this will be A times sine 90 equals and then cross multiply in the other direction, oop, this direction, that would be 27 times sine 39. Since we are trying to solve for A, I need that to be alone. So I'm gonna divide both sides by sine 90. That way it can cancel from the left. And now A would be all by itself. This is what I'm going to type into the calculator. So whatever I get here is gonna be my answer. Um, one warning, so make sure that your calculator is in degree mode, that it says DEG at the top left. So when I type it in, I get 16.99, but if I round it to the nearest 10th, that would just be a whole number 17. Okay, let's look at the next one. We are also using law of sines on this one. So this one doesn't have a picture. If you ever don't have a picture, I suggest that you draw your own. It honestly doesn't really matter what it looks like as long as it's a triangle. So A, B, C. And I'm going to label as I read. So it says if the measure of B is 45, so I'm going to write that in. B, C is 28. The way I drew mine, that's the bottom and AC is 27, find the measure of angle A. So they want us to find this angle up here. So the same rule still applies if we are using law of sines. Since I'm looking for angle A, I need to use the side that's opposite of it. So sine of capital A over 28. And now I need to set it equal to one where I know both of them which lucky for us is the other way. So the other fraction would be sine 45 over 27. So same as before, we're gonna cross multiply. So upwards and then downwards like this. And that gives me 27 sine A is equal to 28 sine 45. We want A to be by itself, so if I divide by 27 on both sides, this will cancel out. 
but then there's still the sine in front of it. So we're going to take sine inverse of both sides. So that little negative one. And type it in just like that. And when I do that, I get 47.2. Okay, so the thing about sine is that it's positive in quadrant one and in quadrant two. So anytime you're trying to find an angle with sine, there's always going to be two possible answers. So how do you find the second one? You subtract from 180. So if I did 180 minus 47.2, that gives me 132.8. So both of those are possible answers. That doesn't mean that they're both right, but they both could possibly be the answer. So how do you check? 45 was given to us. So that has to, has to, has to be part of our triangle. So let me check the first one, 47.2. Now the triangle is 180 degrees. Adding up two of its angle needs to be less than 180. So when I add those two up, that gives me um, 92.2. Which is less than 180. So this first one works. Okay, what about with the 132? So if I had 45, 132.8, is that less than 180? So this gives me 178.8. So it's cutting it close, but it is still less than 180. So they actually both work. So we don't know which one it is, it could be either one. Now, I know for a fact that there is a question like this on your test. Make sure that you are double checking that both of them work because your answer choices will be a little bit tricky. Okay, so on to the next two. The next two are law of cosines. Law of cosines. So I'm going to write this to the side. Say you start with side little a. There's going to be a lot to the formula, and then at the very end, you're going to have cosine of capital A. The way these formulas work is that the front and the back both use the same letter, just one is side and one is angle. So what goes here in the middle? Well, the other sides. So B squared plus C squared minus 2 times B times C times cosine a. So let me move it closer. So that's the formula. And it works with whatever letter. So if I had decided to start with b here, then I would need to end with b, which means that here in the middle, I would use a and c. And then if I wanted to start with little c, I would need to end with capital C. So in the middle, I could only use a and b. So it kind of depends on which side you have. But again, you're going to have these in your notes. So I'm not too worried about you guys knowing these. Okay, but these are the formulas that we have to work with. Okay, so solve for the missing measure using law of cosines. So they're asking us to find AB. So here's AB. Since it's across from capital C, I'm going to call this little c. So since we're solving for that, we need to start with little c squared, which means that this right here, 95, is going to need to be at the very end. So we're going to use the other two sides across from capital B would be little b, which makes this little a. Okay, so let's start plugging into our formula. So this would be 22 squared plus 20 squared minus 2 times 22 times 20 times cosine of capital C, which is 95. Now that's for C squared. If I just wanted regular C, it would look really almost the same. Only difference is we need to square root both sides. 
But now this is what you want to type into your calculator. Again, making sure that it is in degree mode. So when I do this for little c, I get 30.99. But we normally round to the nearest tenth, so that actually turns into a whole number. Okay, the next one. Here's our triangle. This time they want us to find the measure of angle A. So I'm gonna label the sides. So across from capital A has to be little a. Across from capital B is little b. Across from capital C is little c. So I want to solve for A, so I need that to be part of my formula when I write it out. So I'm gonna need to have cosine capital A at the end, which means that when I start writing it, little a needs to be the first number. So 10 squared equals now the other two. So 17 squared plus 11 squared minus 2 times 17 times 11. Oop. Okay. Just like before, if you have a calculator the inspires, as long as you get to this point, you can menu 3, 1, comma, A and get an answer that way. But I don't have an inspire with me right now. So I am going to do it the longer way, but it still works. I need capital A by itself. So essentially these two terms here, since they're both being added, we are going to subtract to get them to go to the other side. Right? Okay. And then these three terms, they're being multiplied. So to get them to go to the other side, we're going to do the opposite and we're going to divide. And then the only thing left is this cosine that's in front of the A. When it moves over to the other side, it's going to become cosine inverse. So um, let's see, let me make some space. So cosine inverse here. So I know I kind of squished it all in, but that's how I would get it. So this whole thing is what you're going to want to type in, making sure that your calculator is in degree mode. So when I do this for capital A, I get 34.01. But if I'm rounding to the nearest tenth, it would just be 34 degrees. Okay, so that is law of sines and law of cosines. Next, we learned some new formulas on how to find area. So it kind of depends on what you're given. If you're given something like this, so this is side angle side, meaning side angle and then side. You're going to use the formula. So since we have capital B, these two sides, so when you go across, this is little a, and this is little c. The formula is going to be area equals one half a c times the sine of capital B. So whatever angle you're given, so we're given 88 for B, you want the other two sides. So if I fill this in, 1 half times 17 times 30 times sine of 88. Just type it into the calculator all at once. Round to the nearest tenth, and I get 254.8. And here, they're measuring in inches, so our area would be in square inches. It's going to have the little two. So remember, this formula only works if you're given side angle side. Sometimes you might be given something like this. So there is no angles. This is just side, side, side. So in this case, if you have all three sides, you're going to use something called Heron's formula. And that's in your notes. But really all it is is 
semi-perimeter, then you would subtract all three sides. So multiply all of that, then square root. Okay, so first thing we need to do is find the semi-perimeter. So that's one half of adding all of the numbers up. So 10, 10, and 15. And that gives me 17.5. So now to find our area, I'm going to write it here at the bottom because it's kind of long. 17.5. Then I want to subtract 10. So I'm done with this side. 17.5, subtract 10 again. So I'm done with that side. 17.5 minus 15. So that's the third side. And then that whole thing underneath the square root. So type that in, round to the nearest tenth. And when I do it, I get that the area is 49.6. They're measuring in miles, so this would be in square miles. Okay, so those are the new area formulas we had. So now we're moving on to vectors. So one of the main things about vectors is finding the magnitude. Magnitude is just the distance formula, if you remember that from geometry, or you could even think of it as a Pythagorean theorem. So this one here, when it's not in component form, it's probably better to put it into component form. So starting point is x1, y1. Terminal point is x2, y2. So for component form, we're going to start with our x's. 8 minus negative 3, comma, and for our y's, negative 1 minus 9, which gives me 11, comma, negative 10. Okay, so that's just component form. But now that I want to find the magnitude, so magnitude will be double line. This is RS. You're going to square root the sum of the squares. So 11 squared plus negative 10 squared. Now on your test, and when we did our assignments, we left it as a square root. So we kind of have to do this by hand. 11 squared is 121. 10 squared is 100. If I add those up, that is 221. And then always check to see if you can simplify it. The thing with this one is the only way to separate it is 15 times 17, or not 15, I'm sorry, 13 times 17. And both of those are prime that don't split up. So it's actually just gonna stay magnitude is square root of 221. The next one is already in component form, so this is a lot easier. So if I want the magnitude of C, 5 squared plus negative 3 squared, so that's each number, then square root. So that's 25 plus 9, which is 34. And this kind of has the same issue. The only way I can separate it is 2 times 17. Both of those are prime. So really, our magnitude is just going to stay as square root 34. So you should always check to see if it's going to simplify. It just kind of so happened that these didn't. Okay, so continuing on with vectors. The other thing that we started doing was unit vectors. So for a unit vector, let me write the formula up here. So since it's called a unit vector, we normally use the letter u. What you do is you take your original vector, so I'm just going to say v is my original vector, and you divide it by its magnitude. So original vector divided by its magnitude. Okay, so here... This is my vector here. So just so we can get kind of like a picture of what this is, 
negative 12, positive 9 would be a vector that's kind of going this direction. I don't know how long it is. We're going to find out how long it is. But what I want to do is, however long it is, I want to go in the same exact direction. I just want to shrink it down to where it's only one unit. So let's start by finding its magnitude. So square root of the first number, negative 12 squared, plus the second number squared. That's 144 plus 81 which is 225. And that happens to be a perfect square. So the magnitude is just 15. So now we're going to get our vector. So negative 12, but divide it by 15. And then the second number, 9, and divide by 15. Only that can be simplified further so our actual final answer, 12 over 15 can simplify to negative 4 over 5. And 9 over 15 simplifies to 3 over 5. So that is the unit vector that's going in the same direction. But now it only has a magnitude of 1. This is like best case scenario when it's easy. Most of the time it's going to have a square root in it. So let's do an example of what it would look like when that happens. So here's our new one. Vector s is at 9, 3. So positive 9, positive 3. This vector would look something like this. But we want to shrink it down to where it is only one unit long. So let's start off by finding its magnitude. So 9 squared plus 3 squared. So I just got each number and squared it. And then we're going to take the square root. So this is 81 plus 9, which is just square root of 90. See if you can split this up. So I know it's 9 times 10. 9 is a perfect square that can be separated into 3 times 3. So I can simplify this to 3 square root of 10. So we're going to use this as its magnitude. So now to find our unit vector, you get each number, so 9 divided by 3 square root 10, comma, next number, 3 divided by 3 square root 10. So first I would simplify. 9 divided by 3 is just 3 over 1. 3 over 3 is just 1. So now I have this, 3 over square root 10, comma, 1 over square root 10. But then now the new issue is I'm not allowed to have square roots at the bottom. So we're going to rationalize by multiplying by square root of 10 over 10. And that goes to each one. So this becomes 3 square root of 10 over regular 10, comma, square root of 10 over regular 10. This is our final answer. So like I said, this is way more common. I know for a fact the one on the test is going to have square roots like this. Okay, next thing says find the component form of the vector with the given magnitude and direction angle. And it's kind of together with this one, right, in trigonometric form. This means that you need to know how to write vectors in trigonometric form. So this is actually, so I'm going to write it to this side over here. And it's in your notes, so don't worry. Trigonometric form is you need to find the, so say our, our vector was v. You need to know its magnitude. So magnitude of v times the cosine of its direction angle, comma, magnitude of v times the sine of its direction angle. So magnitude, we've already talked about how to get that, but for the direction angle, so for theta, it's going to be tan theta equals y over x. That's how you're going to find your angle. Okay. So let's look at what we got. So this one, they already pre-gave us what the magnitude is. 
So magnitude is eight. And they told us what theta is, it's 60. So I'm just gonna plug it into that equation that I gave you guys. So W would equal eight times cosine 60, comma eight times sine 60. But using our handy dandy unit circle, we could actually find values. So cosine 60, if you look at your unit circle, is equal to one half. So I'm gonna replace it with a one half. Then over here, sine of 60, again, straight from the unit circle, is equal to square root of three over two. And now we're gonna simplify. So the first part is easy. Half of eight is four. Then over here, I still have an eight divided by two, so that's still four, but the square root of three has to be there still. So four square root three. That is our final answer there. One tip that I would give you is look at your direction angle. So if you were on the coordinate plane, 60 degrees is about right here. So if I'm in quadrant one, make sure that both your numbers are positive. So depending on your angle, so if this was um, quadrant two, then you would have positive, negative. Just, just be aware of that. Okay, this next one, it says to write it in trigonometric form. So we want sine and cosine to be part of our vector. So let's start out with what quadrant would 15, eight be in? So positive 15, positive eight, this vector would be somewhere over here. So this is quadrant one. Okay, so we need two things in order to write it in trigonometric form. We need magnitude and we need the angle. So let's start with magnitude. You square each number, so 15 squared, eight squared, add them together, square root. So this is 225 plus 64. Then that would be 289, which again, this is a perfect square. So I know that the square root of 289 is 17. So we need that. Now we need to find the angle. So tangent of theta is equal to always y over x. So eight over 15, get tan inverse of both sides. And that gives me 28.1 degrees. So looking at my little sketch that I had did earlier, this, this makes sense. This does look like it's 28.1. So just be careful because if it were to give you, say, this angle over here, you would have to add 180. If it was negative, you would add 360. So just keep an eye on that. Make sure that your angle ends up in the right quadrant. But now that I have both, so I have magnitude and I have my angle, we just got to put it together. So this is vector H. starting with 17 cosine of 28.1 comma 17 sine of 28.1. Okay, dot products, this is what we just did today. So you multiply corresponding numbers, so first number of each vector, and then second number of each vector, and then add up those products. So five times negative 11 plus negative two times three. This is negative 55 minus six, which ends up being negative 61.
So their dot product is negative 61. Okay, so for the next one, it says, determine whether these are orthogonal. So in order for it to be orthogonal, dot product has to equal zero. So let's see. We multiply the first number of each vector. So two times negative six plus, now we multiply the second number of each vector. Negative three times negative four. So this gives me negative 12 plus positive 12, which sure enough gives me zero. So since it equals zero, yes, these are orthogonal. Okay, so we know how to tell whether it's orthogonal, meaning it's gonna make a 90 degree angle, but how do you know when it makes anything else? Okay, so how do you find the angle between each vector pair? There's a formula and it's cosine. So cosine of the angle is the dot product of the two vectors divided by the product of their magnitudes. So I need three things, dot product, magnitude of the first one, magnitude of the second one. So let's start with dot product, A times B. So multiply the first numbers, negative two times negative nine, plus multiply the second numbers, one times negative four which would be 18 minus four, which is 14. So dot product is 14. Okay, now let's find the magnitude of each. So magnitude of A, square root of negative two squared plus one squared, which is four plus one, which is just five. If you could simplify it, you can, but that doesn't simplify. Okay, and then square or magnitude of B, so square root of negative nine squared plus negative four squared. So that would be 81 plus 16, which is 97. Again, this doesn't simplify, so just use it like that. So now the formula for our angle is cosine theta dot product on top and then both the magnitudes at the bottom. We wanna find theta, so we need to take cosine inverse of both sides. And when you type this in, I get 50.5. Okay, one more for practice, all the same steps. Only this time it's written in a vector linear combination, but we still need all the same things. So first we need their dot product. One times six plus eight times negative six. So that's six minus 48, which is negative 42. So that's dot product. Magnitude of F, so square root of one squared plus eight squared. So one plus 64, that is square root 65. That doesn't simplify. And then magnitude of G, six squared plus negative six squared. So that's 36 plus 36, which is 72. And this does simplify, it turns into um, six square root two. So you're free to use whichever one you want. Honestly, you can leave it as square root of 72 because we're gonna put it in the calculator anyway. Okay, but now what we did before 
is theta equals the cosine inverse of dot product on top, and then both of the magnitudes at the bottom. And when you type this in, I get one hundred and twenty seven point nine degrees. Okay, guys, so that is it for our review. Sorry, I know this ended up being a long video. Don't worry. There are not this many questions on the test. It's shorter, so I believe you guys will have enough time to finish the whole thing. It's open note, so you're allowed to use everything that you have, everything that I have posted. Um, but of course, because it is a test, you're going to have to work on your own. Okay, guys, I will see you tomorrow.